Hi, a honing steel is a tool that's very commonly used in a lot of kitchens, whether professional or home. However, it is also a tool that rarely comes with any instructions. My name is Alex, and in, t in this episode of Corin Product Show, let's talk a little bit about this tool. One of the first things I want to point out about the honing steel is that it actually does not take away the dull edge on the knife and replace it with a new one. Um, it, this is some, one of the mis, um, many misconceptions about the honing steel is actually that this is actually a sharpening steel. Actually, it doesn't. In order to properly sharpen, one should still do it with a whetstone. However, what this does is to realign the blade so it gives the knife a quick fix. One interesting thing about the honing steel is that initially when a chef is cutting a lot of fatty meat, there's a lot of of fat residue that's going to be left over on the blade of the knife. Therefore, it's going to make the knife feel duller than it actually is. So therefore, uh, initially the chef uses the honing steel to remove that fat residue so that the edge could be revealed again so that they could continue cutting without having to sharpen the knife. There are many different types of honing steels out there. There are regular, ceramic, or diamond. Over here today, I'm going to show you two of the more popular styles, which is the regular as well as the diamond. Due to the abrasive quality of the diamond steel, the diamond steel could actually use to sort of, sort of sharpen a little bit. Though it's not going to be anywhere as, as good as if you were to do on a whetstone, it is able to offer sort of that extra step for those chefs that does need it. However, one thing I do want to point out about using a diamond steel is that because of the very fact that it's abrasive, please remember that it will do some damage to your knife if you do not use it properly. On this particular diamond steel that we carry here, as you can see, it sort of have a very different shape than the rounded type that you tend to see on a regular honing steel. On the flat type, it gives you two surfaces on which you could sort of hone on. On the regular side, which is the side that's more uh, similar to what you would see on a regular honing steel, it's sort of a little rounded, it's a little bit more flat. However, it also gives you one more side that's uh, uh, along the spine of the of the honing steel which allows you to sort of do a more refined honing as you can see when i hone with the diamond steel a very small surface along the spine is actually in contact with the knife so therefore i'm able to keep my knife very very straight and very very stable when it comes to using a honing steel in general what, there's a couple of things that one must keep in mind one of the four first and most important things is that you must keep the honing steel on a flat surface, such as cutting board. A lot of chefs, a lot of times when a chef sort of, you know, do a quick fix, you see them sort of holding up in the air and do a little sort of a low number like that. Um, that's great if, you, if you're very confident with what you're doing. However, a lot of times if you don't know, sort of, if, or maybe you're not as familiar with honing a knife, it's gonna end up damaging the blade further. So what you wanna do is really keep it very stationary on the cutting board so that you can control the angle only with your right hand which is holding the knife. While honing, please keep in mind the angle that's on your knife. A lot of the knives out there that's western have a 50-50 angle, which means when you hone on the steel, it's going to be the same angle on both sides. However, in this case, the one I'm holding is a special case. This is a Japanese western knife with a 70-30 angle, which is actually becoming quite popular in the culinary industry. So when honing a 70-30 knife, you want to keep in mind the angle that's on the knife is going to be different on both sides. It's going to be a very similar idea to that when you sharpen a knife. Now for more information on how to sharpen a knife properly, we do have a link down, provided down below. We can click on to watch our sharpening video. When honing a 70-30 knife, please keep in mind that the back side of the blade is going to have a higher angle, therefore less of a bevel than the front side of the knife. The back side of the knives you want to keep at the same sort of a, a, a three penny angle as you would when you, when you sharpen. So it's a much higher angle. You want to move downward on the steel while um, sort of gliding along the side of the blade. So if I just do it very slowly here. Okay. And towards the front side, you have, a, you have the 70 angle, which is sort of the, the two penny angle that we talked about in our sharpening video. So again, you want to do a lower angle. This time you're doing towards the handlebar. Um, again, moving along the side of the blade. On a 50-50 knife, a lot of chefs recommend a, a 10 times on each side to sort of, you know, as a general rule of thumb when you hone the blade. Um, while on the Japanese blade, uh, the 70-30, 
um, you want to keep that in mind that you do want to hone the 70 side more than the 30 just like when you are sharpening. I hope you find this episode of the Korean Product Show to be helpful. Once again, please keep in mind that the honing steel is used only to hone a blade, not to sharpen. In order to properly sharpen a blade, you do want to use a weston. Now, my name is Alex. Until next time.